Hey, what's going on, people? Drill Pal CHH here. So today's going to be another podcast, kind of long-form discussion video. Um, I've actually got a couple of these planned, and I'll just bring up this, the, the next one I want to do at the end of this video. So this video kind of got spurred off. I, I should have screenshot it. I don't have it on me, but I was on uh, X, Twitter, whatever the hell it's called, and I saw somebody screen grab something from, I think it was Blu-ray.com. And it was 88 films or a representative from 88 films. I remember I read over this three or four times to make sure I was reading what I was seeing. And it basically was commenting on the sales of some of the 4K titles 88 films had been doing. And the gist of the comment that this person that was representing 88 films made, unless it was just 88 films themselves. But basically what I read was, you know, we're kind of seeing how the wind's blowing with the 4K format right now. It costs us... And uh, it's exponentially more costly to uh, do for to do produce and make 4K discs than it is from Blu-ray, and we're trying to see how the next few titles are going. There's a chance we could stop doing 4Ks and focus back and basically regroup our game plan. And you know, I've noticed that 88 Films has kind of dipped into the 4K format. I've got uh, I know one at least. I have um, uh, I forget what I have. I have one. I have a zombie film from them. Uh, the name of it slips me, but I, I don't have too much. Now, it does make sense that this is an issue they could be going through right now because they are relatively new, but it begs the question, and it's something that's individual for each label. I kind of want to go through this in terms of how I personally feel and um, maybe what makes the most what makes the most sense logically for these companies. The question and the, the name of this video is, should boutique labels focus on Blu-ray or 4K in 2024? Um, now, of course, everybody's going to have their own answer for this, and it's a it's a discussion I want to have, and it's things I want to talk about because I think this is going to be very, very important in today's world, uh, especially in the few years leading up. I think it's going to be crucially important, and I don't think physical media is going anywhere. Don't get me wrong. I'm not getting the coldest of feet on, oh, man, this is, this is the end. Obviously, things are going to become more niche. There's no denying that, but I think what we're going to start to see is for these companies to not only stay uh, afloat, but really to stay successful, they're going to have to game plan properly. There could be a chance that 88 Films can say, you know what, we're dipping our toes with the 4K discs, but we're not going to pursue it. You know, the sales of it's not there yet. Maybe maybe for every uh, 20 people that are Blu-ray and they're into physical media, maybe it's 11 that are have the 4K setups right now. Um, it, it's interesting because in my world... Most of the friends and family I have, they don't even have 4K TVs yet. They still have full 1080p TVs. And to them, that's perfectly fine. They may stick with that. But, you know, this if you're watching this, you're a physical media person, and that's the world you live in. So to you, that doesn't make a difference probably. And quite frankly, to me, it doesn't really either. But it is interesting that relative to where, I, where I'm from, most people don't even have 4K TVs. It's just, you know. Um, so let's see. When it comes to 88 films, it's really, they're going to have to figure out you know, if it's worth it for them. But I also think the biggest thing with 88 films, and I mean no disrespect, uh, the the caliber of the title is going to be crucial. Um, when you get when you get into some of those kind of um, burial ground is the movie I have, by the way, which you know is a, is a fairly fairly no, well known and, and and pretty much beloved uh, zombie film in the Italian market for uh, the fans of that genre. So that was a pretty good title for them to put out. And I mean, I grabbed it. So I look at myself as somewhat of a common denominator when it comes to um, titles and quality of titles that they would put out. So I think that that's a good title for them to put out. But when you look at some of the other stuff they start to kind of get into, you kind of got to question and see, is, is, is the risk reward worth it with titles that they might put out? And I think that's a question they're going to have to really answer now i know it looks like they're doing some non-horror stuff i think they got some jackie chan stuff coming out for 4k and i don't know that market well enough i mean jackie chan's obviously a legend and an icon but i don't know i really can't comment on that you know i have a better understanding on the horror fix so with 88 films i think i really don't have an answer for them they got to figure it out you know they they do a lot of great blu-ray stuff i i've gotten good box sets for them like the urban legend box set the i know what you did last summer box set and I know those sold really well. Those sold well enough to where they actually repress those in more modest uh, box set versions. So, I don't know. It could be the the instance where, you know, um, they stick to Blu-ray. Uh, but let's talk about, like, Scream Factory. Like, what should Scream Factory do in 2024? 
Um, so here's the thing. I think Scream Factory is seeing where the wind blows for themselves, quite frankly. Uh, and that's what they're doing. I don't necessarily think they just want to do 4K, but I think if they're putting up titles on 4K from their library of movies that they've licensed, albeit a lot of John Carpenter stuff, if they're selling... They're just going to keep putting stuff out like that. I mean, it's just the bottom line to me. Um, you look at some of the stuff that they put on 4K, and I, I wonder if the sales for some titles are, are very, very strong, and they're strong enough to kind of pick up the slack on other titles. For instance, a title like The Fog probably sold very well for them. Uh, or a title like Army of Darkness probably sold very well for them. They, they do multiple versions of these movies. You've got 4K versions, regular releases, then you got 4K steelbook versions. And I assume a lot of that stuff sold well. Um, and it may pick up the slack for stuff like uh, Tales from the Dark Side of the movie. Now, I personally was very excited for that movie to come out on 4K, but I don't know what the sales were like for that. Um, obviously, they, they've shown a pattern of uh, a success with 4K because they've continued to do it. Now, I feel like they've been pretty steady in releasing titles on 4K for, what, three or four years now? Their Blu-ray releases in terms of the horror genre have gotten slimmer and slimmer. Um, no pun intended. Speaking of slimmer, I mean, Thinner was the first Blu-ray release I feel like I've gotten in a while. Now, I just got a Funeral Home, and... My question is, do they not put that out on 4K because of element purposes? Like, they can't get the negatives, or what? Um, and this brings up a whole other question that I have to uh, talk to you guys about. But I, I was going to save this for the end, but I feel like I want to bring it up now. Uh, but we'll talk about, really quick, let me go to this. But some companies, I don't think you really have to have a preference with what they release. Now, you're probably saying, well, Christian, what company would you not have to have a preference? Well, look at Arrow. I think Arrow is a company that seems to have the money and the means to do to satisfy both parties. Now, both parties means people that are pro Blu-ray and other people that are pro 4K. Um, they, they seem to have the money and the backing to be able to afford it. And quite frankly, when it comes to Arrow... They're in, a, they're in a position where they're about to do a good two or three year run of Scream Factory, it looks like. Not in totality, because, you know, we've gotten some cool stuff coming up from Arrow. I'm still waiting on my Conan box set, which I'm excited about, and that's new title, so that's great. But I, I, I do feel like with the announcement of Basket Case, we could see a number of titles from them uh, being re-released just on a 4K format. You could clearly say that that was the case for... Uh, Hellraiser, although they did add an actual new entry into that series, which was great. And, um, you know, they also did Psycho. So where they may be, because they, they did Psycho 2 before on Blu-ray. So where they are re-releasing stuff in a higher format, it is uh, ever-present. And I really appreciate the fact that Arrow is going the extra mile to include more titles from a franchise in that aspect. So that's great on Arrow's part. Quite frankly, I think they're probably the best in the business today. Um, but I do wonder if we're about to hit a, a, a not a bump in the road with Arrow, but we're going to see him doing a lot of re reissued stuff on 4K. I think Basket Case could be the first of many. And quite frankly, they could be, I think they could look at the sales of that and decide, okay, this is something we should continue to pursue. It's not, it's not a new thing either. They've done it with Robocop. They've done it with American Werewolf in London. But what I like about Arrow is even till this very day, we're seeing them still produce stuff on Blu-ray as well as 4K. Let's look at Tremors 2, Aftershock. I decided it was in my best interest because if it's a title like Tremors 2, uh, I'm going to watch it. I'll probably watch it a couple times over the next three or four years. I mean, I like the Tremors films, um, but I'd rather save the money, a little bit of money, and get the Blu-ray edition of it. I, 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 I'm just like you guys. Like To me... It's called physical media, emphasis on the word physical. You like a nice presentation. You like to get something that has quality to it and value. So if I can get the collector's edition of Tremors 2 but save, I think, 7 or 8 bucks and just get the version on Blu-ray, I'll do it for a title like that. And quite frankly, it's still the same exact scan from the 4K negative. I'd be lying if I said the Blu-ray didn't look great for Tremors 2. It looked sensational. Now, this isn't a question of if it looks better than the 4K, but... In a perfect world, and quite frankly, Arrow kind of is the closest thing today to that. In a perfect world, these companies will release titles on both formats. So Arrow, Arrow is doing that, and to, and to that I say thank you, because you can make that decision, because I don't want to upgrade everything. Uh, and that's another, that's another 
topic we're going to talk about later. I'll bring this up at the end of the video. So, you know, with Scream Factory, going back to them, I don't know what the next step is for them. I can tell you what I want from Scream Factory, what format they should focus on. Quite frankly, I think they should kind of focus 60 to 65% on Blu-ray and the other 30% um, on, is that the math? Is that, am I math and right? They should do 60-40. They should do about 60% Blu-ray and 40% 4K. Now, what I mean by that is 60% Blu-ray should be attacking newer titles and going after what Second Sight is doing right now. The writing is on the wall for me. People are ready for it, in my opinion. I could be off on this a little bit, but I feel like I have a decent sense of the viewers. I read the comments from you guys. I see what you, people say. I'll ask, what do you want Scream Factory to do? They need to go after the 2000s. They need to go after the joy rides. They need to go after the hostels. They need to go after uh, the there's a lot of there's a lot of slasher stuff that came out in the 2000s. They need to go after all that. They need to be attacking My Bloody Valentine 2009. They need to be attacking a lot of this stuff that went on during this time. And I think doing collectors versions on Blu-ray would be perfect for a lot of this stuff. Um, because you got to think too, a lot of this stuff during this time, not 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 everything is big budgeted. I think like a Dawn of the Dead remake, which came out in two thousand four, but a lot of this stuff was newer digital technology. So I don't know how good that some of this stuff would look on four K. Quite frankly, um, I mean, some stuff looks good. Like for instance, you know, the remake of Last House on the Left, Arrow put out that was a good looking four K. Did it need to be four K though? God's honest truth. Probably not. They could have done a really high-end Blu-ray release of that movie, and I would have been perfectly happy with that. But they did it on 4K, and I picked it up, and I did like it, and I, I did recommend that title. But I really think Scream Factory needs to go after it. My fear is that they're uh, not going to do that and focus on releasing 4K titles of things that have fan bases but aren't really exciting. For instance... The last announcement we got from Scream Factory with some titles was the Child's Play remake, which makes every bit of sense in the world. And, you know, because they've put out basically every Child's Play film up until that point. Now they're doing the remake. And then they did Carrie, the 2012 movie, 2012 or 11, maybe even 13. I know it was early 2000s. That's where they're going. My fear is if they start staying in a more relative era, I don't know if people are going to be that excited for it. I mean... When they announced that, I, I like to read the room, and I looked at the comments on the uh, Dawn of the Discs. I looked at the comments on the Scream Factory post. I mean, some I would say it was fairly lukewarm. So, and, and that's, that's just what I saw. I can't speak for everybody. You could be watching this saying, no, Christian, I am over the moon that they're doing carry and stuff like that. Um, so for me, when I it's really not for, when it comes to Scream Factor anyway, it's not so much the format as it is the library. And I think tackling more titles that haven't gotten collector's edition releases and things like that. Like, could you imagine if Scream Factory did like a release for Teeth? You remember that movie Teeth? Like there is an audience for those movies around that era. And I think that they're waiting and they're saying, hey, why don't we do a lot of this stuff has aged and gotten fan bases, maybe not aged well, because I don't know if Teeth ever ages well, but my point is, it's a movie that came out, made a splash, and it just keeps growing little fans and fans over the years. And there's a tons of movies like that during that time, the late 2000s, the mid-2000s. I think people are ready for collector's editions versions of these movies. I really do, and I think Blu-ray Blu releases is the way to go. All these people are alive, most of them are alive and well, this is vintage to where you know there's an audience for it now and there's a clamoring to revisit this stuff at this point but it's also new enough to where you can cultivate the special feature section so i think that's totally the way scream factory should go is 60 percent focusing on getting titles from that era and going after it aggressively quite frankly and then doing the other 40 percent on doing stuff on 4k re-releasing titles and trying to go after big titles like it's it's their 4k scheduling is really lopsided and uneven. I mean, you've got the stuff like I just talked about coming on 4K, but where the hell is Do uh, Day of the Dead? You know, where's where's some of that stuff? Um, and we can see that they're losing, well, not necessarily losing the rights to some stuff, but like, I don't know that they're going to do a 4K of Psycho 2. I mean, and, 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 and nowadays, the interesting thing is because of 4K being a region reformat, which is the biggest saving grace I can think of 4K, 
And I say this a thousand times, so many, how many, and no matter how many times I say it, I feel like people still learn this. 4K is a region-free format in general, period, point blank. Meaning, if you buy a 4K player and you have a 4K TV, you got the setup. If you buy a German 4K, you bring it home, you play it, it plays fine. It's not like Blu-ray. There's no region coding. There have been some instances where 4K discs were region locked, but that was by accident of the manufacturers and I think those titles have gotten recalled it's happened on four or five occasions over the years and I've seen it and I, I saw recalls for it um, when you look at a company like uh, Severin I think they are pretty smart I feel like those guys are smart enough to know if if if, if it does cost an exponential amount of money to do 4k titles over blu-ray which is what the people at 88 films I saw say they're smart to know, like, okay, a title like Cemetery Man, which has been long lost on physical media, there is a dedicated audience for it. It's one of the best in that Italian world, quite frankly. Yeah, do stuff like that on, on 4K. Now, in terms of other stuff that they do, I don't know. I, I don't really buy a whole lot of Severin. And I think um, they'll probably continue to do stuff on Blu-ray. They're a label that's really a non-factor to me, quite frankly. Uh, not a dig on them. It's just uh, I have a number of Severin titles, but I don't know. Really, with them, it, I think with them, it just depends on the caliber of the title. And you could almost argue with a lot of the stuff. I think it depends on the caliber of the title. Uh, that was that would be my biggest thing with um, with eighty eight films is pick your pick your battle, so to speak. If you're putting stuff out on four K, make sure it's got a it's a it's a big title. I mean that's just that's taking my bias out of stuff that I love out of it because I could love a movie that's not very, very beloved or popular. But, you know, if I say, well, I don't know how many people are going to get this on 4K, you might need to ask, you guys might need to ask yourself that. Um, with Vinegar Syndrome, the truth is, guys, they have people that pay monthly to just get everything that they put out. Uh, and the interesting thing is, I don't even know if that includes the Vinegar Syndrome University stuff, the VSUs. Um, Vinegar Syndrome is an interesting case, right? Because they have a fan base that is rabid like no other. Um, I dare say they have a fan base that willingly knows that they're going to get stuff from them that they are e they're either going to have no desire to watch or no is not going to be that great. Now that does not mean that Vinegar Syndrome does not put out good titles. I'm a fan of Vinegar Syndrome. I have titles from them in my collection that are some of my favorite movies they've ever done, like Fade to Black. Um, and the interesting thing is, I I haven't seen Vinegar Syndrome re-release a whole lot of stuff themselves that they've put out on 4K. There has been some stuff like, uh, um, for instance, um, they did what? What did they do? Not long ago, like Madman, but I don't see them re-releasing a lot of their stuff, which is the inter the most interesting thing about Vinegar Syndrome. They have no shortage of putting out titles, that's for sure. And some of the stuff that they put out, if it's a newer title, they'll just put it out on 4K. Uh, but they are the best at marketing. There's no doubt about it. So I don't think Vinegar Syndrome has the issue of um, deciding what's best for them as a business in terms of formats to release stuff on. I think they know if. They have a pretty good idea, so I really wouldn't even give them, not that I'm trying to give advice to these companies, but I wouldn't even really have an opinion on what they should do or what they shouldn't do. Um, I'm on the outside looking in with Scream Factor, with Vinegar Syndrome, I feel like, because I couldn't imagine paying, and I'm not, I'm not knocking, believe me, I spend a lot of money on movies. It's not a judgment on the person. I, as, a, as an individual, though, I can't wrap my head around spending X amount of dollars I think it's like 900 bucks or something to get movies per month from Vinegar Syndrome not even knowing about the movies and knowing a lot of the stuff they put out is very, very low budget. You know, but that's the, that's a credit to them as marketers, as Vinegar Syndrome's marketers. So they, they, know, they clearly know what they're doing. But when it comes down to answering the question, which format should, should boutique labels focus on, uh, I, I really think it depends on the titles. You know, it's not so much a black and white answer as it is the nuances of it. It really depends on the titles. If Scream Factory was not selling well, they would not keep putting stuff out on 4K. And what I mean putting out is I mean reissuing stuff on 4K. If it wasn't doing well, they wouldn't do it. They would pivot. Because you, if they don't pivot, they go out of business. Or Shout Factory, which I think is a parent company, would just say, all right, we're done. 
we're fin- so they're clearly there. There's no reason for them to change their business plan at this point because they're clearly doing okay now. As an individual, I would love to see them focus more on Blu-ray, sixty percent on Blu-ray, and go after new titles that have not got collector's editions and bonus features and things like that. So that's that's really where I'm at. I think it's individual for each company. And like I said, these are the kind of videos where I want to talk to you, the audience, and share my thoughts. And I want to get a dialogue going because I think we're going to see some companies make changes over the next couple of years with, because I read that there was a giant disc manufacturer a few years ago that shut down. And I remember there was a time where there was a lot of, uh, chaos going on with titles getting pushed back here and there. This was a couple years ago. It might have been a little after the pandemic, a little after 2020 this was going on. And I don't know if all that's kind of leveled out now, but again, this kind of goes back to to what I said. If, if this becomes a problem and it becomes more niche and, you know, if it does cost a lot more money to do stuff on 4K, to produce discs on 4K and stuff like that, this goes back to the question I asked on a previous video. I said, if going back to DVD would say physical media, would you prefer that? Well, let me ask you this. If going more towards doing Blu-ray releases as opposed to 4K would help prolong the life of physical media, would you be okay with that? And before you answer that, let me say this. I said earlier that I pref- I got the Tremors 2 Collector's Edition Blu-ray version, which is a 4K scan Blu-ray. Is 4K scan... If, 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 if it's still from the camera negative, if it's a 4K scan from the original 35mm camera negative and it's on Blu-ray, a lot of times those things still look incredible. You know, is that enough for physical media releases or does the benefit of the, you know, the Dolby... The Dolby Vision, the HDR Plus. Are you? I, I really think just uh, answering this question really depends on how much you've gotten into the format. But is it a, enough of a difference maker for you to where you're like, no, I I know the power of 4K, the format. I see the difference. I want the best. That's something I, I'm kind of wondering where you think the more importance is. Is it on the format or is it on the um, the restoration itself? And, that, you know, I think it's a combination of both things. But again, this is a video I just want to start. I want to start a dialogue. I want to start a conversation to see where everybody's at with this and how they are as collectors. So to, the answer to the question in the beginning of this video, which is which format should companies focus more on? Um, I think the safer bet, like I said, it's nuanced. The safer bet would be Blu-ray if it means going after newer titles that have not gotten collector's editions and specifically Scream Factory is a company I want to talk about considering I'm an American in the United States. That's our biggest company. Uh, you could say Arrow's pretty close, but I think Scream Factory is like the number one in terms of the direct pop culture titles we'll, we get. I really think Scream Factory specifically should really put an emphasis on that. That's just me. Um, I love getting new movies in my collection on a collector's format for the first time where I'm going to be able to learn more. There's going to be more prestige with the release in terms of special features, interviews, uh, and that sort of thing. A nice collector's version of the film. That's That was my the first thing that I fell in love with with getting into collecting physical media was when Scream Factory first came out. It gave a certain amount of relevance to the movie. Like when, when Halloween three got that collector's edition Blu-ray, I felt validated as a fan at that time. And it wasn't so much the format of Blu-ray as it was this collector's edition saying, we know there's a fan base for this. We know you guys love this movie. We, we went in the extra mile. We got the director. We got the actors. They're going to talk about this movie for you guys to learn, the fans to learn more about this movie. That's what I really loved when I first got into physical media on a boutique scale. And I'd like to see a return to that in a bigger way. Um, and I'd like, to see, I'd like to see titles that I have really gotten an aff- affinity for from the 2000s get that treatment as well. And I think going to Blu-ray would be the most... Um, logical way to do that. So that's where I'm at, guys. Again, this is, video is kind of all over the place, but I'm just sharing my thoughts on everything from a personal standpoint and what I think would make sense from a business standpoint and other, and other ways. So guys, really quick, I ramble so much, so I'm just letting you know because I think I forgot to say it. The name of the next long-form video is going to be called When Should You Upgrade? A Physical Media Collector's Issue. That's what the topic's going to be.
Let me know your thoughts on this, guys. If you enjoy these long-form kind of podcast-style videos, that I like doing them. I like discussing this stuff with you guys because I really get to hear where you guys are coming from uh, with your with your stance on this stuff. So thank you for watching. This is your old pal, CHH. Drop a like on this video if you have not. Drop your, drop your comments below so I can uh, see what you guys have to say about all this. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.